Hello and welcome to the show where I try and give you all of the day's Leeds United news in a way that you can trust and rely on. Now, remember before I dive into it, the tier list matters here. On this channel we have a tier list of basically who can we trust in terms of reports with tier 0 being the club itself or club representatives all the way down to tier 4 which is effectively just, hold on, like random Twitter accounts and stuff like that. So as long as you're paying attention to that and as long as we understand people are reliable, some people aren't reliable, we'll be all good. Because I had a weird comment on the last video where, um, because I think all rumours are worth a bit of discussion, but the context around it helps. The context around can you trust them, can you not trust them is essential because otherwise YouTube videos would just sort of turn into this. It is the 26th of February. The club has not made a single official announcement today. As such, due to Peacock Feather 69420XXX's request that we do not report rumours, this is the end of the video. Thank you. Yeah. Basically, we need to discuss this, otherwise every single YouTube channel will be silent and it would just be club accounts. So, with that in mind, let's dive into it. The club has been edging closer to a quite clever move, in my opinion, and I think it's a good idea. Leeds overnight reportedly closed in on Muzielowski at Liverpool. I've learned how to pronounce that one. He's an attacking midfielder, a youth player, and likely assigning for the under-21s. The source is Peter O'Rock, who is Tier 3, so not entirely reliable, but combined with reports from yesterday, it definitely helps to build a bigger picture, and it's a genuinely intelligent signing. If you look at our youth teams at the moment, it seems fairly barren, because a lot of the youth players have moved up and not been replaced. Pascal Strouk, Somerville, Archie Gray, all players that were in the youth squad, moved up, not been replaced. Same for Cresswell, even though he's not getting that many minutes. Same for Joseph, even though he's not getting that many minutes. Same for Gelhart. And that means at the youth level, the standard is dropping a little bit, which isn't ideal. And I think we sort of need to refill the ranks whilst we would simultaneously provide a bit of an attractive option for him because he's more likely to get minutes here than he is at Liverpool. We definitely do need to sign some younger talent, though. I think that's something we need to keep an eye on throughout the 49ers tenure because it's essential. In addition to that, there is another major departure that feels incredibly likely. Mark Rocker has been massively impressing at his club in Real Betis, and it feels like that's going to lead to a permanent move, in my opinion. The source on this one is the fact that he's been playing quite well. I've been watching him. And I guess Isco, who is, I suppose, Tier 1, because he doesn't speak for the club, but it's a weird one. He's been a very strong playmaker since he got to Betis. He's been creating lots and lots of shots for the players around him, including Isco, who impressed very early at the start of the season. They've been a really good midfield pairing. And there is already a potential clause in place for a permanent move should we stay down. If I remember right, the number was something like 12 million quid, which I think is a bit of a loss on what we signed him for, but it's not too much of an issue. In addition to that, we can likely find a move for him even if we do go up. He's been showing that much quality in the Liga. Teams will still want him and we can always just try and negotiate a slightly bigger fee. And that could be a huge financial advantage no matter what league we are in. We have to keep in mind we have over £100 million worth of players out on loan at the minute. If we were to sell those players for even half of their value, then that absolutely saves us in the championship from PNS for a year. It means we don't have to deal with their wages anymore. And in the Premier League, odds are we can negotiate even higher fees. We can build a stronger squad for the first season that we are up. Now, next bit of news, we have a brand new record that's been broken. And this is a channel record that's lasted one day, I suppose. We have our first Tier 4 rumour. Uh, this one, I was trying to script the video last night. Uh, I was looking through various and bits and bobs of news, and I spotted this one. It's a story that is basically completely unconfirmed hearsay, so people that hate rumours, you're going to love this one. Someone said that Nico Williams to Leeds is basically done. The source? Some bloke on Wacko, who I'm considering to be tier four. But other people seem to trust him. Now, if this really was just a rumours and hearsay channel, I would be going all in on this, because I could clickbait the hell out of, we've signed Nico Williams, he's a wonder kid, all this and that. But I'm not going to because that will be dishonest. Basically, in terms of this, this is why we have the tier list. You need to confirm your sources and you need to understand that you don't just read everything and assume it's going to be right. With Nico Williams, we've had reports saying that it's probably not going to happen. That includes from the likes of Phil Hay, Graham Smith, and even Nuno Espirito Santo himself. Yeah, I just... We need to be careful when we're picking out the rumours. Now, one more massive story. There is a brilliantly important return happening at Leeds United, and I feel like it could massively shift the transfer strategy, like, at a fundamental level. 
Although on the face of it, it's not the most important return, but Charlie Crosswell may be returning to the squad. In his press conference today, Daniel Fark said that he's been absolutely professional and open and honest in training sessions, which is good. It shows that Daniel Farker at the start of the month when he said Charlie Cresswell really needs to get it together had an impact. It shows that there's been some evolution there and that clearly it's worked. And for this one, I guess the source being Daniel Farker is tier zero, which is another record because we hadn't had a tier zero before. Uh, Farker also said that the door is back open and that means that he could quite feasibly just sneak his way into the squad, play very well, get himself into the 11. It could happen. This is where the tough love approach of Daniel Farker has clearly paid off because it means that we had a player that was disheartened and not training and therefore not developing well and losing ability. Growing and growing and growing, not only in terms of talent, but in terms of personality. And having a squad full of players that you like, that have positive personalities, that have a good impact on the eleven, is a must. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see him against Plymouth this weekend because we need our senior players to have a little bit more of a rest. So why not bring him in? Why not give him an opportunity to prove himself? I can see that working out. Especially since they won't have Darko, JB and Adam Forshaw available to them. It's not going to be a problem. It's Plymouth. Charlie Crosswell's not too bad. I think we give him the match. This could also hugely affect our transfer plans for the rest of the window because we've seen a lot of people discussing we could potentially sign a centre-back. Nat Phillips has been in the discussion. Ben Godfrey's ability to play in the middle has been part of the conversation as well. I think we might not need a centre-back anymore, especially if Charlie Cresswell is willing to play and fit and he starts to improve. I think the issue we had wasn't the quality of our starting centre-backs because statistically we are one of the best defences in the league. The issue that we had was the depth of the centre-backs. That right-hand side we had Joe Rodon. But a push Ampadu could step in, but with Cresswell coming back into the fold, fantastic. And this could shift the spending plans to other spots as well. We all know we need a left-back. We all know we probably need a right back. There's a hell of a lot of work to be done in this transfer window. And the fact that we're potentially going to keep Charlie Cresswell, we've remedied that situation, we're evolving it a little bit, means that we've solved a problem for ourselves. We've taken away some of the work we could have had to do. And that's just, it's smart business, both from a business perspective, a personal perspective, and a footballing perspective. It works. So, pretty good, really. Now, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, maybe even a comment. In fact, comment below because I'm at the Plymouth match tomorrow. Any content that you want to see from that, I know I've asked a couple of times, but I'm kind of curious. I want to know what people want, like, YouTubers to make because I want to make sure it's a channel that people enjoy watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. You could even become a channel member. That would be hugely appreciated. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you later.